All right, now that we've talked about the different fates of energy that's uh, light energy that's absorbed by electrons in pigment molecules and how that energy is moved through um, from pigment molecule to pigment molecule or to electron carriers, uh, which we talked about in the last um, uh, video clip here, we're going to move into um, those, a discussion of those pigments. All right, so when light, when light energy um, makes contact with leaves, it can do one of three things. Uh, it can be absorbed, uh, which it's absorbed by pigments, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, exactly <clears throat> that that, pig, that light absorption. But you can see in the in the diagram here, light coming in. And then right at the level of the thylakoids, it's, um, the light energy is absorbed. Uh, and we can see it separated into the various uh, wavelengths from 380 or blue, indigo, violet uh, region of the spectrum all the way through, <coughs> through red, which is in closer to 700 nanometers of light. Uh, if it's not absorbed, then it, that light energy is transmitted through the leaf, which you can see coming out to the other side or it is reflected. And in both of these cases, this is um, not captured by the plant. So it doesn't um, benefit the plant in this case. Now, if we're talking about an excess of incoming light energy, then certainly um, reflecting that excess light is going to be beneficial. And there are adaptations that plants have to help um, uh, to, to help reflect that extra incoming light energy, such as having trichomes or hairs that are clear or white colored that reflect that light. Um, but we'll talk more about what happens when there's excess light energy. But at this level, we're we're looking at um, you know that that light energy gets absorbed and that it's going to be absorbed by um, pigments. So the question is basically, how do we know? that pigments uh, absorb light energy in photosynthesis. So we'll um, take a look at the next diagram here. This is this first diagram that we see. Uh, kind of close to the bottom here, or the top rather of the figure, is called an um, absorption spectrum. And an absorption spectrum shows the spectrum of light on the x-axis here, and uh, what light gets absorbed uh, at those different wavelengths of light. What you know, how much absorption there is at those different wavelengths of light. Um, and it turns out that uh, we can see that chlorophyll A absorbs, <coughs> if we write all this out, chlorophyll A absorbs light um, from the region of the visible light spectrum between, um, let's say absorbs 400 to 450 nanometers of light plus 650 to 700 nanometers. Okay, and so we can see that by the, the double peak here, peak in the 400 to 450 range, coming across here and then climbing back up just below 650 uh, all the way through 700. All right, the absorption spectrum that we're looking at here also shows um, the spectrum of absorption for chlorophyll B. And chlorophyll B is considered an accessory pigment. Um, it absorbs light energy from the region of the visible spectrum that corresponds to 450 to 500 nanometers plus 590 to 650 nanometers of light. So we can see that again, that there's a double peak here up um, between 450 and 500, coming back down just below 500, 
um, and then we see that that lighter green ha having a, another peak of absorption between 650 and 700 cut somewhere in the middle there for the peak okay um, now the carotenoids are shown here as well and carotenoids include things like um, carotenes, beta carotenes, xanthophylls. Um, so the carotenoids um, reflect orange and yellow pigments. They, that's how they appear instead of green, where chlorophyll A and B reflect green light. The uh, carotenoids reflect uh, orange and yellow light, and they absorb light from the blue-green region as well. So they absorb light from 400 to uh, 530 nanometers. And you might find references that use different numbers here, but we're just you know speaking the general range. So carotenoids are shown in the yellow region here um, on up to um, basically through this region here, 530. And then they don't have a second peak down here in the lower um, or the, the longer wavelength light or the lower energy region of the spectrum. So you can see by looking at an, app, at an absorption spectrum, then um, the wavelengths that are absorbed by each of the pigments here. Now the question we asked was how do we know that pigments absorb light? And back in the 1880s, there was um, a um, scientist by the name of Engelman. Um, who conducted a, an experiment that was rather um, simple but um, sh showed in a very sophisticated manner the, the um, connection between pigments and light waves uh, or, or um, the wavelengths rather. So in this diagram we can see that there was a long filamentous alga here that was photosynthetic <coughs> And along the length of the alga, there were different um, wavelengths of light that, w that the alga was exposed to. And so, you know, assuming that pigments uh, absorb light in these specific regions of the visible spectrum that we listed, then there are certain pigments that are absorbing light all along the length here of the filamentous alga exposed to different wavelengths. All right, so we have different wavelengths of light um, that the filamentous alga is uh, exposed to. Then we have, um, he introduced aerobic bacteria that you see here uh, to the solution here where the filamentous alga was suspended and, um, <clears throat> and watched over time how they congregated along the length of the alga. So the, f the aerobic bacteria tended to have higher concentrations over here in the indigo and blue and violet region of the alga and then also peak again here in concentration of um, population sizes around orange and red. Um, and so what it, it suggests is that um, the regions producing more oxygen as a result of photosynthesis attract more aerobic bacteria. And we can see a correlation with the congregation of bacteria with the wavelength of light. So it suggests that there's more photosynthesis happening in the blue indigo violet region and in the red orange region where these pigments tend to primarily absorb light. Um, and so it was a, an ingenious way of demonstrating that oxygen production uh, as a result of exposure to specific wavelengths of light allow bacteria who uh, you know we can actually use to visualize uh, production of bacteria in this case um, congregate in those regions. So it also uh, importantly shows that uh, pigments essentially specialize in absorbing specific wavelengths of light. In other words, um, wavelengths. In other words, they're dividing the labor of light absorption 
So we have chlorophyll A that um, specializes in this region here and way down here, and chlorophyll B in this bl more you know blue region and orange red region, and <coughs> and uh, carotenoids in the blue green region here. So by dividing the labor or specializing in a specific uh, wavelength uh, of light, then they cover more um, light that gets absorbed. And then finally we can see down here in the bottom figure an action spectrum. And the action spectrum um, is similar to the action spectrum shown above with the filamentous alga, where now we're actually looking at the measuring the amount of oxygen released, uh, which is you know measured in micromoles per meter square per second if we're looking at a leaf. Um, accord and as it, that leaf is exposed to different wavelengths of light. So when oxygen production is actually measured, we see a matchup with the peaks uh, in total absorption in the indigo blue region and in the orange red region, similar to what we saw up here with the alga. So this is a little more modern day um, way of measuring uh, oxygen production. So our next um, topics are going to be looking at how um, how light, the quality of light that the plants are exposed to during the day, um, which is certainly varies from sunrise to sunset. So the question we're asking is, is, is when do plants absorb the most light? And we can answer that question by characterizing light, uh, which is what we're going to concentrate on in the next video clip.